I thought it'd be fun to do a video about um, the top five th essential things that every fountain pen lover needs. And uh, <laughs> I kind of was inspired by the fact that uh, I, you know, over the last week I was just working in my basement, making a desk, uh, an, a little writing desk. I'm not going to show it to you. It's nothing too fancy. I'm a picture framer, but I'm not a woodworker. But I do enjoy every now and then making something, uh, you know, that's useful around the house. And, you know, it's, you know, I know all the faults that I, when I look at the desk that I've made, it's, but it, it works, right? We have several other desks in the house, but they've all been sort of colonized by our kids and covered in stuff. And <laughs> so, you know, with Zoom meetings and things, and I thought it'd be great to build a desk. And that's what you're looking at the surface of right here. And yes, I've colonized it with a pile of stuff. But um, what I'm going to talk about is some tools and uh, essential things that for every fountain pen, pen lover. And, uh, you know, we all, you know, you, the first thing you think about for a fountain pen lover is inks, of course. And I love inks. One of the great things about the hobby is the inks, the colors, the different brands, trying out new things. The other great thing about the hobby, you know, notebooks. I love notebooks, uh, sketchbooks, notebooks, you know, different things like that. And, of course, the pens themselves, of course. That's the main thing that we think about when we think about the fountain pen hobby. Um, but, you know, there's all these accessories that come along as you get into it. You start finding things that you're interested in and things you'll need. Uh, things you might not really need, but just want. And so I'm going to go through a little run through here. So I built a desk and suddenly I realized I need some leather products. <laughs> uh, so a friend of mine, a friend of ours is a, a craftsperson and she makes beautiful leather goods. And one of the things we asked her to make for us uh, is this nice little leather uh, mat for the top of your desk and you know you could call it a blotter uh, a mat it, it works for you could put a mouse on that and it would work but also if you're writing say on a sheet of paper it's nice to have something soft underneath it and you do see these on online on uh, you know different websites different uh, e-commerce stores sell them they're, they're uh, you know, Galen Leather makes things like this. They're, they they come in all different styles, all different prices. And they do also come in all different types of materials. Like, So uh, while this one is leather, if you're a vegan and you're, you know, uh, a little, if you're uncomfortable with purchasing leather goods, there's, there's fake leathers that look, you know, uh, almost exactly like real leather. Uh, there's reconstituted leather if you're environmentally conscious and you don't want, and you don't like waste. Um, and it's just one of those nice little things about the hobby, these accessories that we can come along on the leather theme. Um, you know, this is a notebook cover by, uh, endless notes. Um, and it, I, inside I have several different little, uh, notebooks and they're all held together by elastic bands. And, you know, uh, I carry this around quite a bit and I, use it all the time and inside it's not a journal that i keep inside there um i i sort of when i go to a meeting i keep my my meeting notes there or um, if somebody recommends something on youtube to me a new product i'll write it in here um, i also keep my inventory of inks in here and what's currently inked right so i keep that list uh, i also try to keep track of pens i've purchased it come, this one came with a great little uh, uh, closure pen loop. And, you know, that's a nice little addition. So, uh, yeah, so leather goods, you know, or things that look like leather, uh, fake leather. Or, you know, sometimes these covers are made of, uh, you know, um, high quality fabrics and canvas or vinyl. But they're really nice to have for your notebooks. Um <laughs> several different companies make them travelers notebooks has some different ones and actually i i kind of want to get a traveler's notebook they have a little one called the passport which is smaller than this 
and uh, it's great to toss in your pocket because sometimes I do carry little notebooks in my pocket. And as if you're anything like me, uh, because I, I'm working with my hands all the time and I'm measuring things and taking notes and I, you know, my pockets could have keys and nails and screwdrivers, all kinds of things in it. So they get a little dog-eared. So it's kind of nice to have cover on, on something. The um, next thing you'll probably need, and this is, you know, is some kind of carrying case. And, and there's many different kind of carrying cases. This is one that my daughter has, and she keeps her pens in it. And, you know, the, and inside it, there's this roll. It's really nice. It, it can hold up to, I believe, how many pens does she have in there? She has room for six pens, but also you could probably get a few other things in there. So it just rolls up inside the case. You can toss this in a bag. You don't have to worry about your pens being scratched or damaged or, or falling out of your bag. And uh, this is a, a really handy thing to have. Um, if you're like me and you like making things, I sometimes fool around with different ideas. And I was at a thrift store and I every now and then I pick up a, a geometry set. And what I do is I take the guts out and I cut foam. And I, I cut a s couple slots in the foam. Uh, that are the size of a pen. I glue that in and I put uh, just a fabric in. And that's great also if you're just going to toss something in a bag and you don't want to lose your pens. You know, it's also kind of funky, kind of fun, you know, and I like making things like that. Um, so I'm not too sure what number we're at here, but anyway, we're going to call it the top five. I'm going to go a little bit beyond five, but another great thing. Uh, I love going to thrift stores and I find, you know, old boxes. This wasn't a box that I found at a thrift store. This is actually something that's been in my family for many, many years. And I remember it, um, getting it when I was a kid from my father or my mother gave it to me. It's an old cigar box and you, you, st you can still find cigar boxes in thrift stores. And they're great for things, uh, um, for fountain pen hobbyists. You can keep fountain pens in it. And at one time I did keep fountain pens in it. Uh, it. They fit perfectly, but as I got more pens, I became worried they'd become scratched. So what I keep in it now is leads and uh, that's an ink, um, you know, different leads for my technical pencils, my mechanical pencils, um, you know, uh, that's, a, uh, that's a koan or graphite. Yeah. So yeah, so I keep things like that in it, but a lot of people will keep fountain pens in it. And I do, uh, other things too. With I have other things on the go with boxes I, that I'm not showing you. You can buy little bags like this. This is just a little carrying bag and it's like a pencil case but uh, you know sometimes I if I'm going somewhere and I have a few pens in it, it, on, me, on me I toss them in that. You can toss a notebook in that and that's just a portfolio. It's made in China. It's just, it's just a felt case. They're not very expensive. I picked that up at the lo my local bookstore, the Bookmark in Charlottetown here, where I usually go for all my fountain pen needs. <laughs> not all of my fountain pen needs, but you know, it's a place where I buy a lot of my paper and I, I try to buy all my inks there. It's really nice to support a local company and they're great, you know, they're a great company. And if you're in a, a city or a this, you know, a good sized town, chances are there's a stationary store. You should go there. Support your local businesses, right? But I do buy stuff online too. And one of the things I bought online, and I'm going to uh, show you, I got this from Anderson Pens, uh, which is a company in Chicago. And I could have probably found one around town, but I was ordering some other stuff and I got this. And this is essential and it's a loop. Um, you can also find magnifying glasses, but a, a loop is great. I can just sort of carry it in my pocket. And sometimes, you know, your fountain pen will be working fine. And all of a sudden you're wondering why it feels a little different, scratchy or something. And you might want to take a closer look at the tines on your, on your nib. So you need something with magnification. And, and also it, I'm a person who's into vintage pens. So I'm always looking over the body of the pen and, with the uh, with the loop, and sometimes, you know, some old pens or even new pens, you're trying to see what size nib it is. So you you kind of you it might be marked on the nib, and but you can't really see it very well. So I use a loop for all kinds of things like that, and it really comes in handy. Um, 
some other items that I suggest you have. You know, uh, I've done a few cases. I've shown you a few ones that carry you can carry around. But as you get into the hobby, you do accumulate pens. <laughs> and storing them in uh, different types of boxes are fine. But I, once again, because I like making things, and, um, uh, and it's fairly simple to do, right, really. But as I make, I make all my frames from scratch. I start off with wood, and I, uh, and I often have little bits and pieces left over, ends, you know, or I'll cut around a, a flaw in the wood because I can't use it, but I'll save that wood. And as you can see, I've made a, wood, a wooden box, and I've used the knots and the flaws in the wood as decorations. Once again, if you are a professional woodworker and you see this, you'll be a, you'll be shocked at the crude nature of my work. But I really enjoy just fooling around. And, I, and I'm not too worried about improving my skills as a woodworker. I just enjoy it, right? But uh, it has a little drawer. You pull it out. I've lined it with a corrugated cardboard. Uh, and, I'll and I'll show you why. Because sometimes... You know, the cigar box or something. If you don't line it, the pens roll around. But I found this packing material, uh, and you can find this in a number of places. And what it is, it's just cardboard, and it's corrugated, but the pens sit in the little ridges, and they don't roll around. So it's great for that aspect, right? So, uh, you know, see that? So you can have several pens in there, and, and as long as you're not smashing your case around, the pens are going to stay in one spot. And that works really well. And I've provided a bit of extra room in here. So, you know, I ideally this could be pens that are inked and the, the lower drawer could be pens that aren't inked. So, you know, about, uh, different organization, organizational methods are great to have. There's a little spot under here that I, I thought would be kind of fun to put in for, uh, because this is designed to sit on a table or a desktop. I just thought it'd be really nice to have a little rack underneath that, serves as the base of the of the case but also serves as a place where i can put notebooks and things like that so these are just little things i make and you know you could probably make them too if you're into you know, you know crafts and skills or you know, or things like that um now this is going to be a little uh, more might say, sound a little uh complicated but there's tools that you always should have if you're in the fountain pen hobby and some of the well, most of these tools you probably don't need but and i have a lot of these just because i like fixing up old pens but as if you're, if you're a person who's using say only modern pens these are still some tools that you should have and some of these are um just things you can find around hardware stores uh you can order online uh and I'll tell you a bit more about it. These are just medicine. Uh, you find these at the drugstore, and they're just you know uh, for for uh, spraying water up, <laughs> up your nose, really. But I've cut one off, uh, as you can see, and I've cut. I did that so that when I, if I'm cleaning a pen, you know, a modern pen, any type of pen, I take the section off where the, and I can put it in there dip the nib in and squeezing it, I can pull water up and spray water out and clean out the feed and fix the need, the, fix uh, the nib in some ways, get the, clean the pen, get all the old ink out if I'm changing a color. My cat came by. And I have a couple different ones. You know, I keep that one like that and you can spray it in. I have uh, just an eyedropper that I can also use for 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 cleaning feeds or spraying down the body of a barrel if I needed to get water you know, if ink sort of got inside the barrel, I want to clean it out. I fill that up. And I squirt it down. and That really works well, you know. Um, this is something called section pliers. And these I use quite often, um, quite often with an older pen. Uh, you'll get it and they're hard to take apart. Now, always use this with as much care as you can possibly can. Uh, they aren't necessarily pliers. Like what, what, um, they're meant mostly just to help you hold on to say a section or a body. Be very careful using them. Too much pressure will break uh, delicate old pens. It will break modern pens. 
So it, it just allows you something to hold on to. It gives you a bit of leverage. And when I'm taking off, say, a section or, or, or trying to get a, a feed out uh, of a pen, especially an old pen, the first thing I want to do is figure, like often going online, figure out what kind of uh, section it is. Is, is it friction fit or is it a screw section that unscrews from the barrel? You should know these things before you start pulling with flyers. But also sometimes when I'm working on a, even a modern pen and I'm cleaning something up, I, I just use it, to, it. You know, sometimes you don't want your hands right up in the barrel. You need to, sit, to stand back. So this is sort of a rubber tip and the uh, section is shaped, you know, like to fit a barrel. And But you use it with this... The, the least amount of pressure you possibly can. It's great for holding things if you're working on them. Uh, that's kind of awkward here with this big Twisby, but, you know, um, really handy. I got this, once again, uh, actually the same time I got this. I got this from Anderson Pens in Chicago. You do see them on different uh, uh, websites that, you know, for, for wholesalers and things like that, or retailers that have online stores very handy tool um, once again when you get it go online look at youtube there's lots of in-depth videos about how to properly use this always approach it with care you don't want to crack the barrel or the section of your pen but it is very handy to have okay another great thing to have i'm going past five and it's <laughs> are these little brass sheets. Uh, I got these at Wonder Pens in Toronto. Once again, they're available at many different uh, uh, locations, you know, so stores. And what these are, they're essentially flossers for the nibs of pens. Sometimes uh, over time, you know, your pen will need to be cleaned and, and it, you know, it, it might be working fine and all of a sudden you just notice it's running dry or feels scratchy or there's something wrong and what you do is you essentially take it and you put it in between the tines of your pen and you pull gently right once again anytime you're working with a pen you have to be gentle right and this will clean out any little bits like ink sometimes clogs up or dries in the nib so a little thin brass sheet and uh, it is very thin, and I would recommend recommend buying this from a fountain pen whole, uh, se a seller, or a, uh, you know, rather than just going to a hardware store and getting a piece of brass. You probably could. Be, it's very thin, but yes, and they're very cheap, uh, but they're really handy. And I have used these many times for for older pens and modern pens, and sometimes when I'm changing inks and I'm just wanting to get everything working really well. I'll use these little brass sheets. Um, um, Anderson Pen has them. Goulet Pen has them. Uh, Wonder Pen has them. Really, really lovely to have. Um, another thing. Silicone grease. Quite often, uh, I use this for lots of different things. If I'm cleaning out a Twisby and working on an old pen I'll you know I'll put a little bit of silicone grease around a piston head uh, quite often with an older pen I'll put silicone grease on the threads if it's uh, or on the section as I fit it back in just to seal it up it, uh, it comes in very handy uh, Twisby is famous for uh, supplying silicone grease with their pen they also su supply a little wrench with their pen. So it, with the Twisby, it's just a very little bottle. Um, once again, if you're looking to know how to use silicone grease, YouTube. <laughs> there are many, many videos about YouTube on YouTube about how to properly use silicone grease. And um, For instance, also, if you're, say, into converting uh, Pilot Preppy to a eyedropper pen, you will need silicone grease. The other thing I, I, you'll need, and I don't have it here, um, on me at the moment. If you're converting a preppy to an eyedropper pen, which is like what an eyedropper is 
uh, filling the barrel of the, the of the pen full of ink using, say, a syringe or something like that. Silicone grease is what you need uh, to uh, help seal around the threads and the gap where the section is, just so uh, you won't have as many leaks or any leaks, really. Now, another thing that I really like um, is micro mesh. I use this. Uh, that's eight thousand grit, and that's twelve thousand grit. Quite often, when I get an older pen, you you know I do a test to see how it writes, and it, or even sometimes with a modern pen, if if, it, if something happens to it, you know that you might find that the nib is starts to get scratchy, or if you buy a a modern pen and you don't like how the nib feels. I will use micro mesh to soften or to, to slightly smooth out the nib. Now, once again, handle with care. It will take a surprising amount of material off the tip of your nib if you're not careful. That's where the loop comes in. <laughs> so what I do is um, I take the micro mesh and I fill this thing with water and I put a few little drops on the micro mesh and I spread it around. And then I take my pen that it needs to be, you know, a little tuning on the nib, and I will carefully go in a figure eight in, on the wet section. And, and then I will do a writing sample, and I will sort of hold the pen in several different angles and, 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 and uh, try to feel how the pen, pen if it feels smoother. And, and if it doesn't quite feel as smooth as I want it, I repeat the process. Do it a little bit, figure eights. Do a writing test. Take a look at the tipping with your loop. Always be doing this as you're going. You don't want to just sit there doing this and doing this and doing this for a long time and then write. You know, it's a little bit of a little bit of a figure eight. Write. Look at the look at the nib. You're looking at the tipping, the iridium point uh, under the loop. And I find that really works. If you, you know, uh, it really works to smooth uh, the nibs. Some nibs are beyond repair, and that's a sad fact sometimes with, uh, if you drop a pen or something like that, so then you might have to repair, uh, replace the nib. Keep in mind one thing. If you have a modern pen and the, if you just bought it, if you just say go, went to the store and bought a Twisby, if you're going to tamper with the nib, like even with the flossing, with the brass sheets. If you're going to alter the nib in any way, you, you do risk voiding the warranty. So if you buy a new pen and there's something seriously wrong with the, the nib, check your warranty first, right? I'm a, I'm a tinkerer. I love the, this part of the hobby myself, but I always tell people, as soon as you do something to the nib, you're, you, you run the chance of voiding your warranty. Read the warranty that comes with the packaging. But I always, myself, <laughs> because I love doing this, I, I, I always, you know, I, I, I always uh, try to do this myself. Unless, of course, there's something seriously wrong with the nib. Once again, if the first thing I do, when, if, the, if there's something wrong with the nib, I look at it under a loop. It could be something like the lib, the, the the times are out of alignment. It could be the tipping is damaged or something. You might have dropped the pen. It might have hit the floor in a certain way and everything is bent. Then you're looking at replacing the nib. But uh, all of those steps are to be followed. I also use this quite often. Uh, what I use this for with vintage pens uh, is to remove scratches off of plastic or uh, resin bodies. Once again, this is something you have to practice on. And what I what I did when I started tinkering with old pens is I actually looked for some junker pens on eBay, and I and I, I bought some really bad quality pens that were banged up. They were missing nibs and everything like that. But what I wanted them for was. I wanted to take those pens and practice on them. I wasn't worried about damaging them in any way, so I practiced taking them apart, and I bought pens deliberately that, you know, I can use as just uh, you know, to, to experiment with, really. And I 
and uh, also practice polishing, seeing how it worked. I didn't start on a new pen or a, or a vintage pen I bought. I started on a piece of junk. And I you can find them uh, on eBay for, you know, don't spend a lot of money on them. Or if you have an old broken pen that you, you can't get working, use that as an experimental piece. That's something that you're going to practice developing some skills with. One thing I do when I'm uh, repairing or working with an old pen, um, this is a metal pen. I I wouldn't use this to the scrap to on a metal pen, but usually a plastic or a resin pen. Sometimes a celluloid pen, depending on the material. One thing I use is micro gloss, and this uh, <laughs> this is from Anderson Pens again. This isn't a paid promotion in any way. These are just the, the places I find these products. You can find this uh, 15 pens in Canada carries it, uh, but you can find it on different uh, websites. There's places all around the world that sell it, but I, I tend to get uh, some of this stuff from Anderson Pens. This is microgloss number one, and there's a microgloss number five. Now, when I start with an old, an old pen that has, you know, it, that's a nice pen that I want to restore and there's scratches on the body, I will start off with microgloss number five and uh, this, uh, which is, a, it comes out, uh, it's, a, it's just essentially a white, you know, milky, creamy, looks like a cream almost. And you put a little bit of that on the body of the pen and you use the micro mesh. You know, I start with a, a higher, uh, I start with a lower number micro mesh. This is 8,000, 12,000, but it goes all the way down to say 3,500. So you start off with a coarser micro mesh and then you, you polish the pen. You just roll this around the body of the pen, you know, just gently doing it, always sort of looking at the pen using the, the loop again. The loop comes in handy so often. Always use the loop. <laughs> so as you work up to the finer grades, um, You'll start off, I start off with number five, and that takes a lot of scratches out. And then when I'm getting into, say, the 8,000 and the 12,000, uh, I use number one. And number one is a finish coat, and it provides a high gloss finish to the pen. Once again, I would do research before using it on a pen. Know the material that the pen is made from. Look online, see if it's safe to use. There's so much information online. But before you use a product, look online. I'm telling you what I do, but I'm also saying do some other research too. You know, there's lots of great videos about how to use materials like this. Um, there's also different types of metal polishes you can get into. There's jeweler's cloths that you can use for, for uh, restoring, uh, uh, you know, the furniture of a pen, the clips and the, the bands. Once again, be careful if it's a gold plate that you're you're working on because you can easily take off the plate. Sometimes it's better just to let it be, right? Uh, so yeah, that's um, pretty much it for today. <laughs> but I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you uh, uh you uh, you know maybe uh, it's uh, learned a bit. That's always nice. I'm always learning myself right? I'm an amateur, but I'm always learning. And I watch a lot of videos and I read a lot of things. And that's the great fun bit about, about the hobby. Oh, hey, actually, you know what? I forgot one thing. I keep a box like this and it's full of junk. Anytime I come across a part or something like that, that I can't use, I, I keep it, you know, right? Uh, and I put it in a box. You know, sometimes when I buy it, you know, I might buy a bulk, like, on eBay, sometimes you can buy three or four pens and one of them might be restorable and the others are junk, but I keep the parts. And I, and I even have, I remember one day walking around a dr grocery store and I lost the cap off my Parker Jotter and I was, you know, it was one pen I always used around. I looked around and I couldn't find it, but I kept the pen. It, I didn't throw it out. I keep it in here for parts. Maybe someday I'll find another cap for a Parker Jotter and I'll use the pen again. Never throw any parts away. Keep them. You'll, you'll never know when you need them. Uh, where are they? One thing that I, you know, I keep in this box, I keep, say, converters, you know, barrels, nibs that aren't being used, anything like that. 
This is actually another little thing. These are latex sacks. You can buy these online from many different suppliers. Anderson Pens, again, is where I got these. They come in different sizes. Uh, you don't have to buy a lot of them. Quite often, uh, if you're looking carefully through latex sacks, you'll find that the, the retailer will have, say, a starter pack for for pen repair. So they'll have uh, they'll sell you five different sizes. Uh, Anderson Pens does that. Uh, a few other places do that. This isn't a paid. I'm not being paid to <laughs> promote these companies in any way. I just like using them. And there are so many different ones too that provide all these things. So yeah, latex sacks. If you're restoring older pens, you're going to need these, right? Or if you're interested in trying to fix one, fix one up, this is what you use. So yeah, this is what I do. This is the fun part of the hobby for me. And I hope you enjoyed this video. And I really uh, appreciate you watching and sticking through this long, long ramble. And if you're new to the channel, I'd love it if you'd sub subscribe. And if you're also, if you've watched a few of my videos and you haven't sub subscribed, <laughs> I can't even say subscribe today. If you haven't, I'd love it if you would. It always helps to have that. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Or if you have any ideas about things that I might want to be to take a look at, uh, by all means, um, send me a message. I really enjoy getting the messages from people. Uh, somebody, you know, people are recommending ink brands to me that I'm not aware of, or a different pen or papers. I, you know, that's the great thing about being on YouTube sometimes, or even doing YouTube videos. For me, it's all about learning things and, uh, and, uh, always be learning, always be experimenting, always be trying new things. And I hope you all have a great day and I really appreciate you watching. Thanks a lot.